guys, so now we're gonna talk about uh, reconstituting a medication to put in our secondary line. So um, over here on the uh, iPad, I have a little scenario. So our patient's line, we're going to imagine is running in our patient room. And so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take a look at the order. And so in this case, the order doctor has ordered the uh 750 milligrams uh, to run over half an hour. So we know that uh, cefazolin is going to be um, compatible with normal saline. So we've got a normal saline mini bag. This one is 50 mils, which is appropriate for this dose of cefazolin. Every drug has a certain amount that it can be diluted in. And as a nurse, you need to look those up. They're going to be individual uh, per medication and dosage. So in this case, we're using 50 mils of normal saline as our mini bag. And we have obviously checked that it's normal saline, that it's not expired, and the volume. So we know that our normal saline bag is good. We also have a secondary set. So our secondary set has no ports um, and has a secondary line, a uh, secondary hanger. So we know that. In this case, this drug, we're going to uh, reconstitute with four mils. So we chose a five mil syringe as the best one for that. Then we have our blunt fill mixing syringe as well. Don't forget a medication label, a label to manage the mini bag line, and of course your alcohol swabs. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at our order and look at our patient's history, make sure they're not allergic to the um, medication at all, make sure that this is the right medication, make sure I've got the right diluent. So we would obviously check our diluent, normal saline, and our medication vial, and we would read the label ensuring that it is the right medication. In many institutions now, you would scan the medication, which is an additional check. So now that we're happy that we have all of our equipment, we can get ready. So of course, the first thing we always wanna do is hand hygiene. Can't do anything if your hands aren't clean. And then we're gonna open up our two labels, our two vials. So one vial, two vials. So our vials are now open. We now have to clean them because these vials are not sterile underneath. So we're gonna clean. To clean, you actually have to rub. You can't just touch. You wanna rub and then it has to dry. Put that to the side because I don't have a garbage here, but normally you would put those in the garbage. Now I'm gonna prepare my syringe. I'm gonna open your syringe. Also gonna open my blunt fill needle here, ensuring not to contaminate the end of the needle or the end of the syringe. Okay. Now in this case, we do know that the we need to reconstitute this with four mils. So here we're going to pull up four mils on this syringe of air and inject that straight into your saline, then flip it upside down and withdraw four mils. Okay. Sometimes you get small bubbles, that does happen. As long as there's no large bubbles, you're good to go. So there's our four mils. So now we're gonna take that four mils and inject it into our vial of medication. Okay, automatically some air is going to come out because of the pressurized vial. We are then going to carefully recap so we can set this down while we mix our vial. Some medications can be shaken, some have to be rotated, all are different. Again, as the nurse, you have to be aware of which medication you have and whether it can be shaken or rotated. Okay, so here we have this vial, there is no more um, powder, so we're good to go. Normally, of course, your vial would be fully labeled. Again, we're in a lab, so we don't have those fully labeled vials, um, but you would look under the label to see if the powder was dissolved. So now you're going to draw up your amount. So in this case, our, our dose, uh, we have a thousand milligrams in this vial. We're going to take 500. So that would be 2.5 milligrams. So again, you put your thing in there, you inject the air, you invert, and you bring out your volume. Okay. go and now we have our correct volume in our syringe 
ready to be injected. Before we inject it into our mini bag, we must clean again this hub. We have to actually rub and let it dry. So we're gonna place that there. And while that's drying, I'm going to take this moment to fill out my medication added. So we put our patient name, we put our room number, we put what the uh, medication is and the amount that who had added it, which was me and the base solution, normal saline and the date and the time um, and the start time that we're going to do it, which is generally speaking the same time as you're preparing it. Okay. So now I have my label ready to go. I'm now going to take my medication. I'm going to carefully inject it into the mini bag, spray it in. I'm going to take this out. I would now no longer recap this. I'm done with this. And so we would put it in our sharps container. Now I have this medication with my medication in it. I'm going to give it a brief little shake and then label it. So now I have my medication in my bag labeled for the patient. The next thing we're going to do is now open our secondary bag. Okay. The secondary bag has two pieces. Once again, it has this paper that you're going to tear off and you're going to untangle your line. Sometimes it gets tied up. And then of course you're going to push your roller clamp to the top and close it, okay? Both caps are still on. Now we have this second piece. So in order to allow gravity to work, we need to take our primary line and hang it below our secondary line. So that's what this piece is for. We are then going to take our medication, go into our patient room. And again, we're going to verify our patient, make sure we have the right patient. In many cases, you might requ be required to scan your patient um, or confirm your patient by wristband and date of birth. So we're going to make sure that we're in the right patient's room with the right medication. We've already verified before we brought this medication in that we have the right medication for the right patient at the right time for the right reason. So we've already done all those checks. So now we're in the patient room. We've confirmed that we have the right patient. We're now going to put our secondary line up. Again, our secondary line is clamped with both caps on. We're going to take off this cap, take off this cap, exactly as we did previously, maintaining sterility of both. Grab this and squeeze it in. So again, you'll notice that there's no fluid running because we've appropriately clamped it. So we're going to once again, fill this up to between a quarter and a half. And now we are ready to prime this line. This line runs much faster than a primary line. So you want to make sure that you run it relatively slowly. And as you can see there, it just starts running so quickly, um, simply because there's no ports and there's no nothing else in the line. So once you start this running, you get to the end and you can see it's coming, coming, coming. Okay. And now it's at the end there. So we can take our cap off here and we can see it's actually already at the end. There's already a little drop at the end, so I don't need to prime further. I can simply replace this cap. Now, before I attach this to my patient, our primary line would be running and you always want to attach your med to this upper port. So there are two ports. This one's closer to the patient. This one's further from the patient. This is where your secondary line gets attached further from the patient. So I'm just going to set this other portion of the line over here, simulating our patient. So now we have our line primed and we're ready to go. We're now going to clean this port and we're going to make sure that it's nice and clean and we're gonna give it a moment to dry. And while we're giving it a moment to dry, we're now going to label this other line with the date and the time, knowing that this is good 
depending on your institution for 24 hours or so. So now that line is labeled. Now nothing has touched or interfered with my line, so I'm good to connect. You take off your, your cap, you take your, sec your upper port, you push and you turn. Now our secondary line is attached to our primary line, but our pr secondary line is not going to run because it's still turned off. So we need to now turn the secondary line all the way on. This is not, this roller clamp is not where you manage your rate. This one must go all the way on. You're now going to grab your primary line port and this is where you're going to start managing your rate. Because this primary line is lower, it's not going to run. The secondary line is going to be the one running. So when I turn it on, you'll see here, takes a moment, there we go. My, prime, my secondary line is starting to run. My primary line is not at all dripping because I have set this one correctly above. You would now set your drop rate for your secondary line noting that it was to go in over half an hour, so it should be running at 100 an hour. We know that this tubing is 10 drops per mil, so we would count appropriately to have this run in over half an hour. We'd then come back and readjust our rate for our primary line. And that's how you prepare a primary and secondary line.